Hi, this is Ralph, and I want to go over a few more functions here in Excel. In particular, I want to go over count if, large, median, mode, rank, round, small, standard deviation, and sum if. And I'll go ahead and put some results over here. To start off, I need some numbers to work with. So I'm going to use a ran between function and give myself a set of numbers from 100 to 999. I'm going to select that. I'll fill downward fill across and I have two sets of numbers. While they're selected I'll do a right click, drag away, drag back, and I'm going to copy here as values only. So now I have a set of random numbers. Okay, now the first one I'm going to do is a count if. In my previous video we used a count and count a function, so I'm going to do a count if now. Go ahead and start off with an equals. I'm going to start to write out the word count and notice there's lots of, there's several count functions, but I'm going to do a count if and I'm going to go ahead and select the range of cells I want to count, which is my numbers in set 1, and then I'm going to do a comma. Notice I've got my little tooltip here, and these are my parameters. I've got my range, now I'm going to go to my, you know, type in a comma, and now I'm at my criteria. What do I want to count out of this data set? Well, I'm going to go ahead and count, quotation mark, greater than 700, closing parentheses. So I want to count all numbers in this data set that are greater than 700. Press my enter key and I have three responses. Let's just do a quick visual confirmation. 941, 883, 780, I have three numbers that are more than 700. So count if my number is greater than 700 within that range of cells. Now there's a newer function too. Let me go ahead and insert one in here. I'll just go a uh, count ifs little extra room and let's go ahead and put in a few extra numbers here. By the way if I typed in 800 there my count if does update. Okay so count ifs is kinda like the count if function but now we can look at multiple criteria in different ranges. So let's go ahead and try this one out. Count ifs. I'm gonna go ahead and start off a count ifs function and my criteria range 1 is going to be my numbers for set 1, comma. My criteria is going to be greater than 700, comma. Now my criteria range 2, my number set for set 2, comma, quotation, less than 700, end quote, in parentheses. So I'm going to be looking for situations where I've got numbers greater than 700 in my first set and numbers less than 700 in my second set. Let me press enter and notice that I get a result of three. So basically what it's telling me is there are three situations where I have a number greater than 700 next to a number that's less than 700. And we can visually confirm this. Here's set one, bigger than 700 and less than 700. I'll go ahead and just color that red for now. Here we go. Ah, bigger than 700, but not less than 700, so that's not getting counted. Bigger than 700, less than 700, that's getting counted. Bigger than 700, less than 700, that's getting counted. So those are my three. Just so you can see how this works, notice that I've got three results here. If I change this 740 to a 640, I do get a count of four now. Because now, bigger than 700, less than 700. So count ifs looks for multiple criteria and multiple ranges and that's a new one for 2007. Okay, now I'm going to use the large function. The large function is kind of like the max function, but the max gets you the biggest number, where the large can get you the second biggest number, or the third biggest number, depending. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to go ahead and start off equals large. Notice it's looking for the array. So my array is my range. Let me go ahead and select my set one for range of cells, comma, and the position. So let's try this one. I'm going to type a one, closing parentheses, enter, and notice that I get a result of 941, which is my biggest number. I would have gotten the same result if I would used max. Let me modify this. What is my second biggest number? 883. Sure enough, that is the second largest number. So something like this might come in handy if you wanted to take out some outliers. You know, take out the max number and let's focus on the, the second largest number or the third largest number. So there we go. Let's go ahead and try median equals median. Select closing parentheses. There we go. So the median of my set numbers, my set of one here is 593. 
And of course, the median is giving us the number in the middle of a range once it's ranked in order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. This number is used a lot in, in our local newspaper to, des to describe house prices where average might be misleading. Sometimes an average can be influenced certainly greatly by a number of outliers, very expensive houses, whereas the median might give you a better impression of a town's normal house pricing. Uh, let's just do a little quick comparison. I'm going to insert another row here, and let's go ahead and stick an average in. Equals average, and I'll do this range of cells. Enter. There we go. And let me just put in another number here. 500, 300, oops, I don't really want those red. Okay, so my average is 620, whereas my median is 589. And just so you can visualize this a little bit better here, I'll go ahead and uh, take this data set, one data ribbon, and I'm going to go ahead and sort it. I'll continue with current selection, sort, there we go. And we can see that my median number, 589, is in the middle there where 620 is my mathematical average. And just so we can really see how this gets, you know, what if I had this amazing outlier where this last number instead of 941 was 3000, okay? Now my average is greatly affected by that, but my median is still showing 589. Mode is any number that might occur the most. I don't really have a good data set for that, but let's try it anyway. Mode, select the range of cells, None applicable. Let's try this out manually. Let's have two numbers that are 500. Now 500 is the number that occurs most. Clearly much more useful in larger data sets. Now, for, now rank will allow us to find out where a particular number occurrence ranks within a set of numbers. So let's try this one out. I'm going to go and type equals rank. The number that is in question is going to be, let's say, let's check out this 780 right there. So where does this 780 fall in the rank of my set of numbers? Comma. The reference will be my range of cells. There's, okay, so where does 780 fall in this? Comma. And the order. Order will be either ascending or descending. 0 descending, number 1 ascending. So let's go ahead and try each of them. I'm going to go ahead and put in 1, ascending, smallest to largest. So it's telling me that my number, 780, is in the 8th position. Okay, And since my numbers are sorted in numeric order, we can actually see that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. If we change this to descending with a 0, now it tells me, my 780 is in the fourth position, and we can just count from the largest at the bottom. One, two, three, and four. So where does a particular score rank in a set of scores? Now to test out the round function, I'm going to go ahead and put an average in. The average of all of these numbers, and notice that I get an 806.2727. Now I'm going to go ahead and modify this, and I'm going to round my average. So in front of the word average, I'm going to type a round function, opening set of parentheses, and then I'm going to do a closing set of parentheses after that. So I'm going to round my average function result. Now after my average function, but before the end of my round function, I'm going to do a comma. Notice my screen tip here showing me the information for the round function. So the first parameter for my round function is the number that I want to round. In this case, the number is the average of the data set. Now the number of digits I want to round. Now if I, I can use positive numbers or negative numbers here. So if I do a positive 2, I'm going to round two places to the right of the decimal. So let's press enter here. And notice my result is 806.27. Let's modify this a bit. I'm going to round one place, and I should have 802.3. I'm sorry, 806.3. So it was a 27, and now I'm getting a 0.3. Now, one of your first questions might be, well, how is this really different? Let me go ahead and undo that for a moment. How is this really different than just changing the display of decimals 
there we go, 806.3. Now by changing the display of decimals, the value of the number behind the scenes is still 806.27. So the round function actually changes the value of the number, whereas the decimal display simply changes the display of the number. And that'll be critical if you want to just change the display but still calculate with the true number. All right, so that's our round function in action. Let me show two decimal places again. In fact, if I show more decimal places, you'll see it's been rounded out to all zeros. And let's just try another scenario. I'm going to do a round negative 1. This will go to the tens place. I'm sorry, to the ones place right after the, um, to the left of the decimal. Okay, so I get an 810. It was from 806 before. Negative 2. There we go. Now 800, 806 to 800. And I really wouldn't go any further in that in this number, but let's see what happens. Negative 3 goes up to 1,000, 806 to 1,000. Okay, now the small function is very similar to the large function. I'll go ahead and try this one out. Small, my range of cells, comma. Now if I did 1, it's going to give me my smallest number, 251. But if I do 2 for k, my second smallest number, in this case 443. Okay, and for standard deviation, equals STDEV, my range of cells, there we go. So my range, my standard deviation is 749, which is the square root of its variance, and this is commonly used in order to show the variability uh, of, a, of a set of numbers. I don't have a very big data set here, so not the most practical. If my numbers were a little bit more in common with each other, in fact, let's just do a little experiment here. Let me do a, another ran between function, but this time I'll go from 800 to 999. Auto fill that down. Okay, and notice my standard deviation is much smaller now. There's not as much variance in my set of numbers. And some if. Now for some if, this is kind of an interesting and tricky one, but uh, for some if, it'll only count or add up numbers that meet a particular criteria in one data set. So I'm going to go ahead and change my data set out a little bit here. I'm going to change this to ran between, and I'm going to do the year, uh, let's say, 2005 through 2010. Autofill this down. I'll do a right click move back, copy values only. So now data set 1 are years, data set 2 are some numbers associated with each year. Now I don't even have to sort these, but here's what I want to do. I want to only count up the numbers that say match up with 2009. Okay. So I'm going to go over to my sum if function. In fact, let me uh, scroll this down a bit so it's easier for you to see. Equals sum if the range of cells that I want to consider here are going to be in my set one years. There we go. The criteria, 2009. The sum range will be in these set of numbers. Close the parentheses and press enter. And notice that I get 1592. So let's try to figure this out. Let me go ahead and change my coloring here a little bit. 1592 is my total that I'm getting. And I'm looking for data sets in 2, values in data set 2, that match up with the 2009. So there's a 2009. Let me go ahead and uh, change this to red so we can see that. Here's another 2009. Change that to red. So looks like I've only got those two numbers. So 992 plus 600 is 1592. So I am only matching up numbers that have 2009, or that correspond to 2009. Let's see this used in a little slightly different way. I'm going to put 2009 right down here, and in my formula, instead of actually typing 2009, let's just reference the cell right below it, 1592. What about 2010? 1045, so if I look at 2010 years, there's a 2010, change this to a blue. And I must have another 2010. There it is. Okay, 764 plus 281 is 1045. 
and you can keep changing this out, 2008. And there's my result, 520. So those are just a few more functions in Excel that you might use when you're working with a larger set of data, uh, particularly numeric data.